It's your girl Jazzy K with Super Tight TV. We want to thank everyone that's been watching. Hey, if you do us a favor and hit that subscribe button, also press the notification bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video. You're not tuned in to something super tight. Puffin' something sticky, nigga, I roll through the light Need to hear something real just to get me through the night I'm looking for them jackets cause I know they looking shy Know I'ma get some game tuned in with super tight Yeah, I get the low love from Big Bobo From the front seat, not no photos Already, baby, what's up with it and what it do It's your big dog, Bobo Luciano I wanna thank everybody again for tuning in to Super Tight TV We back, up your back, going smack, smack, smack just like that. I hope it feel good to you too, cause it damn sure feel good to me. I got my sexy ass, gorgeous, beautiful wife. It's your girl Jazzy K in the building. Mm -hmm. What you sipping on? You know, a little old fashioned. You know me. I'm like, still on that Belizean nice rum. And mellow. <laughs> Don't drink up my rum. That was for me. Yeah, little Belizean. They bought that for me. Coconut rum. For me. From the islands, man. <laughs> Don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> But today, we got a special guest. A new, yeah. Wait a minute. Man, it's been so long. Yeah. A new family member. Okay, there you go. I'm like, I got a new guest. family member. Yes. Yeah, we ain't got no guest up here. We just earned a new family member. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so uh, I don't know if you noticed, you know, we are sitting here in Texas. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you, you noticed that, right? Look at Texas, Texas. You see? Okay. But I got Jones Monroe in the house. Yeah. Because it's a Texas thing, baby. Right. It's a Texas thing. Um, now, now you see that blue star right there? Mm. That's like our Apollo star. That's not Dallas Cowboys, because you know, you know, we all love our Cowboys, but they kind of hard to love. It's a love hate relationship with them right for now. the last twenty eight right years. Now. You know what I'm talking about? It's a sensitive time. Ever since Jimmy Jones, I mean, mm. Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson left. There you go. Get it right. Damn. He even put him in the ring on and everything. That ain't going to do gonna nothing. Too little, too late. Mm. Thought was gonna break I need you to rub that star because that's for positive energy. Mm -hmm. That's for your career. Ooh. Your Texas. life. Texas. Yes. And uh, leave some for us so we can blow up your way like okay. my wife say. You know what I'm talking about? Already. So, uh, baby, you want to run down through that? You know, I, I do. You. I know so, Miss Jones Monroe. Yeah, we've been checking out your music. I, I, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Yes. Sure. Sure. But um, why don't you start by telling everybody where you're from? Uh, I'm originally from Turtle, Texas. Mm -hmm. I was born in Dallas, Texas, but I grew up in Turtle, Texas. Okay. What high school? I went to Turtle High. Okay. So, I thought you were going to say what high, what hospital. <laughs> you thought I was going to say that? Yeah, that's what I thought you was about to say. We always say high school, baby. My where bad. have you been? My bad. It's okay. <laughs> on that road, I digress. Uh, on that road, that's what it do. But uh, <laughs> Terrell High. <laughs> okay, so paint a picture for everybody. What is what is it like? Um, what was it like growing up in Terrell? Oh man, my grandma raised me okay. in East Texas. So grandma raised me. I mean, when I grew up, it was real country. Mm -hmm. Like it was still country. I think Hutchison's was still a store. Oh, like man. you can get groceries on credit. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> I shake. Like, hey. <laughs> Try that today. No. I'll be back. But I don't think Hutchison's there anymore. No. You know, like. <laughs> no. Oh, wow. So y'all lived in the country part of Turtle. We did. We did. Okay. So, now, when you say country, was it livestock? I mean, not that country, 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 okay. but like country, country. Okay. So like an acre was about the yard. Oh, yes. I used that to ride a tractor to cut the yard. Mm -hmm. Listen. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. Y'all didn't have any wild animals? No, we had, I mean, we had dogs, we had cats, okay. chickens. No deer? No, I mean, we had some on the property. Okay. 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 That's Ooh, like. You say the property. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. way. No, no, no. It wasn't even <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I miss with don't you. Don't mind him. <laughs> miss my bro, don't mind him. So, uh, did you have any brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have, um, I have four brothers. Wow. And well, so. Where do you fall? I'm the youngest. Oh, you the baby. Yeah, I'm the baby. Y'all hear that? Yeah, yeah. Four I, big brothers. I think I heard <laughs> something in one of your raps. And I'm not. What's your sign? I'm a Leo. No, I didn't hear that then. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Yeah. I didn't hear that. Maybe. I thought you said you was a Pisces. Oh. Uh, no. I, I saw you on Rap I, Economics. I, <laughs> I saw you on Rap Economics. Shout out to Prez D and DJ Shout Night out. Out. Yeah, Our brothers. Yes. You represent. Everybody can't come up here. Yeah, hey. yeah. You represented on there. Appreciate yeah. you. Appreciate you. I love to see the females represent, by the way. Oh, yes. It's the female era. Man. It is y'all's time. You know what I'm talking about? So tell me about how, how does it, how was it coming up as the baby in the family? Because I know how it is. Cause, so, but, I mean, my brothers are like, like my mom like to call them men's men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they like to bully me around and stuff like that. And so I, I guess my oldest brother, he protected me. But like, I was still like the baby baby. And when I grew up in Terrell, like I actually grew up my grandma by myself. Okay. So like, mm-hmm. there was a time whenever, you know, Mm-hmm. Punching on me and all that, but kidding like a brother. But then I'm gonna burn up by myself, really. Yes. So we, we, you, are they that much older than you? Is what you're Not saying? Not too much older than me. What's the oldest one? Oh, uh, the oldest one. He is. Now see, now you getting old. Now you. Let me see. How much? My he, job. he is 39. Okay. 39. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ain't no one like 18, so you know, that's quite a, quite a bit of age difference. You know what I'm talking about? That's what's up. <laughs> what you laughing at? Yeah. She's like, you gonna roll with that? We gonna roll. Yeah, she's like, okay. Let's roll with that. Roll right. with that. Yeah. <laughs> so I've um I read that um you've been playing the piano since you were five. Yeah. I actually have oh, synesthesia, so oh, I play wow. every instrument. Really? Yeah. What's your favorite? Piano. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that learning the piano helped you? Was the piano first? For sure. Like you need that basis of of theory and that yes. full chordal sound and help you with to, to learn other instruments guitar, helps you with rhythm yes. cadence drums like everything i knew it yeah they do for the bar piano we got a nine-year-old oh uh-huh. yes yes That's i nice. knew that was the key to it all <laughs> that piano what yeah huh that what can you play without looking say, no say what you said ray again. charles up in here ray yeah. charles said break one. Oh, yeah <laughs> piano wow you yeah. would not you would not pronounce it like that. Yeah. Um so at what point other than um you know playing musical instruments, what point did you decide to get into music seriously? Like being an artist? Oh man, I've only done music my entire life. So, you know, I used to be an opera singer. Oh tell us about you don't that. have to hit us with one of <laughs> Tell us about that. You don't have to hit us with somebody else. <laughs> Because if you're an opera singer, your voice is very strong. Yeah, you yeah. can't tell. She yes. Voice. I mean, right now, I've just been, you know, cranking out rap records nonstop. So I feel like I'm in my, like, lower husky tone. But I'm actually a mezzo soprano. Okay. And so, yeah, grandma put me in piano. She put me in opera, classical voice training. So that's what I did for forever. Shout out to grandma. Shout out to grandma. To the grand Straight team. home to you. Already. Dedicated to her, you know. So what made you switch from singing to rapping? Man, that's been a journey. Mm-hmm. So, um... Sang opera, I quit singing opera, moved back to Terrell because my grandma was in like failing health. And so I wound up to being her caregiver. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I got into artist development. I worked with a Disney company, worked my way through that, then started my own artist development company, uh, like what, some years back now. Mm-hmm. And then since then, during George Floyd, I really was like, I felt like a call. Mm-hmm. And so I wound up, I went into the studio. One of my clients actually stood me up in the studio. <sighs> <laughs> and, and the engineer was like hop on the mic and I was like man I don't do music and mm-hmm. they're like what you do me and I was like I just build it out like for other artists I don't do music myself and he was like just getting there and so I got in the, in the booth and literally an entire album came out like every song that I have on on the album was written straight through and which album was this it's actually an unreleased soul album oh. unreleased an unreleased soul album i released the first one of it for christmas and it's going crazy actually it's called straight home to you mm-hmm. but uh you know i got my my boy vc so shout out to southern fried marketing yes shout out big BC. time yeah shout out to vc he was like yo little mom where your music and i was like huh and he was like you got you rap and i was like yeah, yeah. and so i went to me bc taking in my artists wow I took him actually ironically a rap artist. Wow. And so I still remember us sitting there and we're talking about it. And then I, I sent him a bunch of music, you know, and I was like, hey, I was inspired by this from this George Floyd movement. And he was like, man, what you got going on? And I was like, I mean, I do music, but I don't do music. Yeah. Long story short, 
it's been a crazy journey going down to Atlanta. I've been working with, with literally all my dream producers, yeah. all my dream writers. You know, like I really feel like the industry has just opened its arms to me. And I've been just like cranking out, like I feel like hit after hit. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's and amazing. So, do you think being on the other side of it has helped you as an artist? For sure. Mm-hmm. If if I I feel like that's what's making me feel like I can shortcut it, and it was actually also helping me shortcut it because yes. I know how to the business side of it. I mean, there's mm. a huge corporate business side to it. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. and the majority. You, it is. <laughs> right. Yes, it is. And if you don't understand that, I mean, you kind of lost. You got a cheat code. Well, that's the Listen. problem with a lot. A lot don't understand the business side of it. They just, you know, love the art. You got to get into both. I heard you, know, you mention Disney. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, baby. It's okay. Let me cut you off. Me on I thought you was through. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, I heard you mention Disney. Yes. You worked with Disney or you uh, contracted yeah. through? Contracted through an artist development. So I worked with Kids Pop, like trained them vocally, um, did like a lot of different albums with them for wow. all the artists in there. Um, How was that experience? It was interesting dealing with the the parents mm. <laughs> <laughs> piece of it. It's <laughs> always it. Yeah. Ask the teachers. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. For real. Look. Teachers, I mean, teachers would be, you know, be a cool job if it wasn't for the parents. Listen. Maybe. Listen, my grandma would still be oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but how long did you do that? You did that for quite a while? Man, I, yes. Wow. I did that for forever, it seems like. And um I'm just I feel so blessed. We're actually filming a reality show about it right now. Oh. Wow. It's called The Rise TV Show. Go and check it out online. Super, super dope. Okay. Uh, we're finishing up our first uh, um, um, se- uh, season right now. Yes. And it's really dope. It follows me as an artist developer with along with a team of uh, artists who work within the industry from like Sync, shout out to Eclipse Darkness, mm-hmm. to like just different people. And we take them to LA and we work with Motown Legends. Oh, wow. Because the thing I feel like that's missing right now in the music industry is true artist development. Yes. Like, Mm -hmm. really the guidance of the Motown, the standards. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's just the standards. And so, you know, going to different things like that, it's been interesting documenting it. Super excited to get to the next season. Mm -hmm. We have some networks. So So what are are some of the things you're seeing with um, the younger artists that are hooking up with these Motown legends? Like, is it having an impact on them? Because I kind of feel like sometimes we're in a time where some of the younger generation don't really respect, honor, or respect, yeah, or receive, um, or receive those that came before them. Um, it's interesting. It? It's it's really, especially like throughout the years, and especially working with um, like all the Disney stuff. A lot of artists are manufactured, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so like doing this, you're really able to see the true artistry rise to the top. Mm-hmm. Like really, the yeah you see you see it rise because yeah. the most of them is really also it's apparent here. like their attitudes jacked up, like they don't know how to co- um, collaborate to do anything, and so it's like okay, you're not gonna listen to this advice or like take think, criticism. Like oh my take lord, criticism now, yes. So I mean, I, I mean, I use it for myself, mm-hmm. and then I'm I say especially for this next year with as many huge things that I have coming down the pipe, mm-hmm. I'll be able to say, hey, look, the proof is in the pudding. That's right. How long do you? I mean, you don't have to just put a specific time, but just give us kind of an idea. of how long would it normally take to develop an artist? Typically, at least three years. Okay. Y'all hear that? It ain't overnight. Yeah. It ain't overnight. Don't think y'all putting finna get on TikTok and make your little right. dance video and think you're finna pop <laughs> like that. It's finna pop like you know, ain't what, no, what they gonna do on TikTok, baby? Yeah. <laughs> hey. ain't, ain't, it ain't no, it ain't too many post Malones or who you know, people that just pop overnight. You but know. even those that people think popped overnight, if you look back, they've been putting in work for a long time. Yeah. A long time. Because yeah. the three years is like everyday work. Like yes. full eight to five, yes. like eight to eight. By time, by time they go right. through that though, they should be right. Yes. Does that include um Interview skills. Interview, pre- voice training, yes. rhythm training, studio training, yes. etiquette. Like learning how to market yourself, brand development, yes. working out, working mm-hmm. with the stage presence, putting together your show, learning how to produce so you can even effectively communicate to the producers that you're going to be working mm-hmm. with in the industry. How long you been in Dallas? Oh, man. Let's see. I moved to Dallas for forever, like maybe 17. Okay. 
2017? No, no, since I was 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. So do you, I'm, I'm, I'm building that question to ask you another question. Do you see lack of artist development here in Dallas? Because I'm always trying to figure out that next move and why we can't get to that, you know, with a hump. You know what I mean? You know, because I'm curious. Oh. And what you think as a young lady, as an exec, as mm-hmm. an artist, you know? Uh, no, for sure. Um, I just feel like a lot of, of, of Dallas is missing just the infrastructure. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, to be able to come together and effectively do things at higher levels. Mm -hmm. Um, Part of it could be funding, but at the end of the day, if there's a project that's well put together, you can go and seek funding for those things. Yes, you can. That's right. And so, but then by the time that funding comes, like the the infrastructure is not even set up to where they know what to do with it Mm -hmm. or that they allocate it correctly and, you know, maintain reputation and just different things like that of that nature. So I feel like we're, we're on the curve. Yeah. You know, I feel like we're we're getting better. It's it's interesting even being like in Deep Ellum and hearing like the sound evolve. Yes. Um, that's been cool to see. And I'll you know, I feel like different genres. It'll be interesting to see, you know, some other true sets come. And yes. so that's what the that's what the rise is all about. You know, we're about to really, really hit it hard this next year, discovering talent, developing talent, and really utilizing our resources and saying, Hey, this is what happened in this amount of time. This I is what it. you can do too. That's dope. So the song Black. Hey. I like that song. <laughs> yeah. I saw you um you released that song on Juneteenth in yes. 2021. So what inspired that song? The whole George Floyd movement. 2020 was a great year. We came from kings, rose yeah. up from queens. Yeah. 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 I like that. And um it was given not to compare you to anybody, but I could feel a little bit of the Beyonce vibes. And, uh, <laughs> you know this last album it she in the behind so that's a that's a compliment it is coming it from is. her oh um, yeah and i like the quality i um, appreciate that. just the me the the music quality the studio quality the voice so um yeah so george floyd that so let's talk about that how was that whole process recording that song it was it was really good like my grandma used to always say you know hold your head up high you're beautiful Mm-hmm. you're strong mm. and I was in a parking lot actually and this little girl walks up to me and she's like you're so pretty and I was like oh my god you too mm-hmm. and then she's like no not like you she broke my heart mm-hmm. and I was like and then when you when you think about it and especially what's going on in the world today you mm-hmm. know I won't get too much into to politics and all of that but like what's mm-hmm. going on in the world today and so much of of segregation being re-brought up mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, you don't have to feel that way. So, like, black was was brought out of that. And from that, I was like, listen, and I came up from the bottom. I, mm-hmm. Everything I got, I, I built it on my own, and you can do that, too. Right. Like, you're beautiful. You're black. Yes. Right. Drop your black card. I love it. And, that, and it is important. I do, uh, you know, I'm a huge proponent. I always say representation matters, and our youth do need to hear that. Um, you know what I mean? You're beautiful, too. Did you have and a conversation with the young lady? Yes. Good. <laughs> Already, we need that. Like Kool Aid, we need that. I mean, my my sisters, my sisters. I, you know, I'm I'm a huge opponent. Opponent, proponent. There you go. <laughs> Y'all gonna learn some grammar on this show, okay? My bad. Y'all baby. learn nothing else. <laughs> proponent oh, of my sisters. <laughs> it's, the, it's the wrong, baby. <laughs> Blame it on the wrong today. Yeah, today. <laughs> what is it tomorrow? <laughs> Kool Aid. Hey, yes. Kool Aid. Let's talk about Kool Aid. Now, my, my my wife said something earlier. She said that she liked the quality in that in the black mm-hmm. video. It seems like all your videos have nice, top notch quality and the the production as well. Let's talk about Kool Aid. Who did the track on that song? Oh my gosh! So I went down to Atlanta. I got to work with uh, Bento Success. Okay. Um, shout out of like he works with Jazzy Faye, mm-hmm. like everyone. So right. really, really excited for that. And then I got to um, to redo it also with um, so I had a couple of different producers because you know really good records have mm-hmm. multiple people on it. Mm-hmm. Eddie Ferguson, Ooh. Ian Alexander out of Houston. So I had Atlanta mixed with Houston, and it wound up creating this really, really dope sound, really, really dope vibe. I read it. I like that song. Yeah. I like that song. That song is uh, real catchy. Yeah. 
I can see it going far. Is that the one you're pushing right now? No, uh, right now. I mean, right now it's doing really, really well. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's on like, its own. Yeah. On its own. Already. You know, so it. I I love that song, but I have some others in the bag off my EP that Come I'm just on, like, Ooh. you're itching, huh? Listen, oh, hey, <laughs> who's helping you pick your singles? I have a whole like R and R team. Hey, there you go. We talk about this all the time. What, baby? This. Picking up the singles. Yes, we do. Because you know how that artist could be like, this the one. No, oh, it's it normally not and the it one. Ain't. Right. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> My whole boy them say, that's the one. Listen, mm-hmm. that's because they high at home. Yes. Like, it sound good because it was so personal. Yes. Right. Yes. All friends around. Yes. My five homeboys say, that's the one. This was my struggle. And other that's people it. just want to dance. They don't want to be yeah, like, that no, your struggle. Um, so you got to. I'm going to split a block yeah. on this one. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what would be your, um, you had five minutes to talk to an up-and-coming artist and give them the best advice you could give. What would it be? Ooh, I would say find yourself, center yourself, like fix yourself. Mm. Well. Because an artist at the end of the day is going to be an artist. Mm-hmm. Like, there are artists who are undiscovered underneath the bridge that are are Mm. amazing. Yes. And so, at the end of the day, though, if you don't learn to work on yourself and and center yourself, you won't be able to actually spread the energy amongst larger crowds. Or you won't be able to send out enough good, positive energy to attract a team around you that wants to work with you and help you and see your vision clearly because you clearly are centered. Mm -hmm. That's That's strong. And it's also important, too, that knowing yourself so you don't get lost in the sauce Listen. because there's so many people trying to put on you what they think you should be to do this. You have to be able to know who you are and all of that. I think it's a lot of fake artists out there as well. Mm-hmm. Everybody's not an artist, should I say. What do you mean by fake artists? Well, I, I, I came back and cleaned it up. Everybody's not an artist. Amigo said that then moved me. Yeah, mm. everybody's not an artist. You talking about plants or what? You no, <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm like, well, well, just because you rap, don't make you an artist. Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not creating. You you may feel like you're creating, but you know. But to me, an artist, a true artist, feels the music. Tries to create something. It's almost like a, a painting. Or, Some people are trending. Yes. They're not really. Yes, they they, 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 they okay. in it for the wrong thing. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they're in it like for the bag. Or, right. I, I don't think they're trying to create on a higher level. You know what I mean? And that's, you can that's usually tell opinion. in the music. Yes, you can. You know, they won't have a whole project that you can listen to from beginning to end yes. and be like, ah. No substance. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Spin the block, spin the block, thrive. All this old shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, I just look like this. <laughs> now I want to. I want to pronounce this right. Okay. La duty. No. I mean that's what it say right here. La di. Look what it was saying right there. Right? Who's right? La da di. It's la da di. It's la da di. Crystal waters. It's that. La Dari. That was a typo. Oh, well, how am I supposed to know? Because I told a... you, if you look at it everywhere That's why else, I said. it's La Dari. <laughs> it's a setup. La Dari. Kenny. <laughs> Kenny. It was a setup from the beginning. Every time, who be the one mispronouncing? <laughs> Rub the blue y'all put oh, it yeah. in the comments out there. Y'all that watch the I show. I told y'all, I butchered some shit. As long as y'all know that. It's, it's been over a year. It. Say it from it's your chest. It's been over a year. La Dari. La da 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 we were listening to that song as you were uh, making your arrival, <laughs> your grand entrance. And before. And before. Hey. You know what I'm saying? But it has a good groove. It has a vibe to it. Mm. You know what I mean? I almost forgot it was on. It's one of them type of songs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We Subliminating. It was just like. Ooh. Yeah. It was just in the background. Just See, us women, we got to have them songs mm. where you look in the mirror and be like. Listen. <laughs> Oh, What's that? Rio, uh, 
Yeah. The affirmation or something? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. You got to send them affirmations. Yeah, okay. You got to sell them. Listen, yeah. that's, a, that's where that song came from. Mm-hmm. And I said, white toes and a white tee. Dia Chanel got you on side C. Like, it's, it, it was an empowerment song. I was like, okay, I'm the bitch. Because mm-hmm. here's the thing. I remember getting so angry when I was in Terrell, Texas. I used to sell, I used to breed pit bull puppies. Mm-hmm. Mm. And like I'm almost on my hustle, and I so really, <laughs> I, I see. <laughs> and I and there was a, right listen. <laughs> and there's this group of boys walking down the street, and they were like, "Hey, give me a puppy." And I was like, "Oh, okay." Well, they're like, you know, I'll give you a discount on this one. <clears throat> mm-hmm. He's a little older. He was like, "Nah, bitch." Ooh. I'm gonna take your puppy. Listen, I got my pit bull. Mm-hmm. I got up in my jacked up truck. I won't say what else I did, but I went and talked to them. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you ain't going to call me a bitch yeah. and come down my street. Like, this is not okay. And so it, it's from there, I've always had a problem with people calling me bitches. Mm-hmm. or calling just women in general. Yeah. Especially black women. Yeah. And so, but then on the flip side, I was like, I can see because I'm that bitch. Mm-hmm. Listen, I owned it and I flipped it. Yeah. And I said, I'm that bitch, bitch. Mm-hmm. Ooh, and it felt good. <laughs> that, part. that part. You gotta do that sometimes. You know what I mean? It's it's Miss Bitch to you. Oh, let them know. Hmm. Now, when you're writing your songs and you're constructing your songs, are they usually? It sounds like they're from life experiences. Is what yeah. you're telling me? Always, always from life experiences. Always. How long it take you to pen a song? How, wait, what? Do you to, write your own? Song? Oh yeah. Uh-huh. I write, normally I run them straight through. Mm-hmm. I really do. Really? Yeah. Normally I write them straight through. Like some of them. I mean, I always. I have this, um, me and some of my friends, we joke around. You should be able to finish a record in three hours. Okay. I mean, you're not trying to rush projects, obviously, Mm -hmm. because it's a piece of art. Yes. But, like, no, I really just, I just write. I just came back from Houston, and I I finished three songs in a few hours. Yes. But you have to be like that when you're trying to be, you know, a successful artist. Because it's going to be people all the time. Like, come on, let's go to the studio. Listen. You can't be like, my writer. I want to punch you in right fast. Hold on. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you say? I mean, a perspective is different. Now, what's, yeah. your, what's your perspective on that? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I heard what you said. I'm like, what you say now? <laughs> About that punching? <laughs> About that punching shit? It's a little different. <laughs> it's a little different. It's unique. Little. Have you ever done a song like that? Recorded a song like that? I mean, I've collaborated. That's not your thing. Mm-mm. Okay. You old school like me. Listen. A true artist. Let me feel some. Yeah, let me feel yeah. something. And I felt that on rap economics. You know what I mean? When you sat down and you went through your different voices, <laughs> you did. Mm-hmm. You went through your different voices, and I was, and, and even my boy uh, uh, Nightcap and Prez D was like, "Hey, don't nobody bite this style. <laughs> it's, it's it's a totally different style. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I want y'all to know that this young lady has got something. You know what I'm saying? Jigger. If you just keep I think if you just keep persevering and, and keep pushing, it, it's. I mean, you got my man BC in your corner. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the best. The best Southern Fried Marketing for your, for the. I'm gonna give a commercial right. Southern Fried Marketing. Cool. Hey, <laughs> teamwork makes the dream. Teamwork, work. yeah, yeah, for real. He's, I mean, I, I I just think I've always tried to send people through to BC, right. but people don't believe in themselves mm. enough to um, spend a little bag. Listen, you got to invest yes. yourself. You yeah, got you to do. invest in yourself. And I was telling my wife, I said, hey, she, she doing it the right way. I mean, she got good quality videos. Yes. She got the beats that are sounding really right, fast. And you got BC in your life, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that there's a BC, someone of that caliber mm-hmm. in every city, I'm, I believe, you know what I mean, that can get you to that next level. Uh, a, a, a marketer, a southern, southern fried marketer, you know what I mean? But not BC. You don't have that BC. You Listen. know what I mean? BC got a lot of connections. I've been knowing him a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah, so, over 20 years. Yeah, y'all check her out. The quality is definitely there because I'm a huge critic. Like when I hear, like you said, let me feel something. When I hear um, beats and then the beats is like, yes. you know, then I'm like, oh. And sometimes, you know, artists can come through and overcome the beat, and it's like, oh wow! But then when it's just all a good mesh, and it just sounds so yes, professional and crisp yes. and clean, I love it. Yes, yeah, I out. think it come more from her writing though, but and, well, not, yeah. and not the punching. 
No, because, yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, you because can tell the difference. I could tell the difference right off the rip. You know, you got a, an extreme talent. You know what I mean? And um, it. you can, like my wife said, you can just really, really tell when someone does that punch and shit. You know why? Because she can't perform it. Ooh. That's why I bought a rap, rap economics. Oh. You can't perform it. Listen. I see the BT Awards. It's like, oh my God, what have we gone to? You know what I mean? I don't want to call no names because in, in the past I have called names. You know what I'm saying? And, and it was a female, and I hated to do that, but the show was just terrible. The performance was terrible. You know, and I was like, it, and that's what it was. It was a performance. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. It was more of a performance, too much dancing and, and not enough, you know, rapping. No. I'd rather you just sit in one the spot. dance is dance. I remember, one, I, remember, I, I, I remember one time, I, I can tell you a story. Story time. One time back in the day, there was a rapper. Well, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna start there. Let's just say this. We went to Houston, right? We went to this convention. We who? Well, I ain't I gonna start a well, this group, this group, this group I used to be affiliated with in Dallas called Nemesis, right? So when we're down in Houston, they're, they're going to perform at this uh, convention. And so we're in, the, we're in the audience, and all of a sudden the stage just go black, right? And somebody push a microphone to the front of the stage, and a guy walk up to this microphone. And he just said, nasty bitch, nasty bitch, nasty bitch, nasty bitch, nasty bitch. You remember that song? Bust down. God. And when I say he didn't touch the mic, all he did was just rap that song, and the and just the the, the performance, but not the performance. His stage presence did it all. That's what I'm saying. It's 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 more to just mm -hmm. rapping and you know stop letting the crowd say a bunch of no i like the way you do it you know yeah. what i'm saying appreciate um, you. yeah I, um i applaud you appreciate you i applaud you because it's a it's it's a lost art all right kenny it's a lost art <laughs> so what's next for you man what's next i'm about to head to the grammys Dang. It's gonna be fun. You about to go That's to the Grammys? Yeah. Is this your first time going? No, I used to go all the time on the corporate side. I mean, this is my first year going actually as as Jones and Row. Oh, wow, that's so, be exciting. That's, that's gonna be really dope. Take you bunches of pictures. Wearing? I do. I have outfits. Uh, I got a creative director out there. Shout out to Tice. Okay, and so he designs my outfits. That's, and so, that's dope. Yeah, it's gonna be really really dope. Uh, that's gonna be fun. Come back from that. I'm about to go back out to the Midwest. They've been showing me girls a lot of love. Um, and then I'm dropping my EP. And so, when, and then after when, that. When? When? Listen, everyone follow me right now. Love Jones Monroe. Love Jones Monroe. On everything? On everything. Okay. On everything. Love Jones Monroe. And you get to see. Because it's, it's kind of like a, I really want to get the fans involved. I really mm -hmm. want to build a true following. So, I'm going to be dropping it this spring. But the official release date is going to be, you know gotta follow y'all go follow. follow love jones monroe you're gonna love her <laughs> you got some shout outs man oh lord let me see shout out to my mama oh really i never shout out my mama do it now listen shout right. out mama <laughs> Already. listen she be she be holding it down shout out to everyone on my team shout out to classic world records shout out to southern fire marketing shout out to silence tice uh the whole city of dallas eclipse darkness shout out to bos eddie ferguson ian alexander all the producers just everyone that i work with super excited so blessed to have um shout out to my new marketing team like this is going to be so amazing this year we come into new heights and together we are bringing back love yes most importantly and we're bringing back togetherness and oneness i love it that's what's up i love that shit <laughs> he said we bringing back love say so, yeah, i appreciate you coming appreciate you you know what i'm talking about next time Wait, you come before what? you go we gotta ask out one question go ahead of your music mm -hmm. uh oh mm -hmm. what's your top three favorite songs oh oh i just uh redid stand by me mm. it's it's unreleased yet but 
I just read this stand by me. Um, oof. Hey. Listen, throw your hands left and right. Um, it's, it's really dope. Um, I love Kool Aid. Okay. Kool Aid came out. It's about NET, something I'm passionate about. My mm. wrist game on that mid bay. Um, I love either money or power. They tie money is a we I did an interpolation of Ray Charles, what I say, uh, mm. and then um. Power, I don't know. It's just such a chant. Kendrick Lamar. So one of the two. Okay. Well, you're talking about my songs, right? Yes. Okay, but. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, else, who else, who influenced you coming up? Oh, man. Listen, I listen. I listen to every genre, but I mean, Aretha Franklin. Yeah. I love Ray Charles. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can just feel him. And every right? song has a place. Um, I mean, I love Kendrick Lamar. I love boys to men. I love the harmonies. I mean, I just love everyone for different things. You talked mm-hmm. about the voices earlier. I love tones. It's mm-hmm. part of my synesthesia. I read it. So mm-hmm. that's beautiful. So. We we'll say we sure appreciate you coming. Hey, no, let's talk about. Me. I got. Oh, excuse me. We have a new family member. You know what I'm talking about <laughs> I'm Texas. Yeah, for sure, Texas, East Texas, right? Yes. No, no, no you D town. We go. I mean, it's been a long time. Listen, yeah. listen, you Dallas now? Oh no, it's only been one year. No, oh, no, so no, she no. was seventeen. She's eighteen. Listen, well, she lived here. <laughs> well, where were you during the interview? She lived here when she was seventeen. And then she moved to Tyler. <laughs> I heard all that, but I and thought she, she was only eighteen. Okay. <laughs> Got you. I thought that what we said <laughs> earlier. Did nobody correct me? Oh, sorry. That's Did nobody you correct said. me? That's what you said. But no, nobody corrected no me. No one bother correcting you because you be wrong so many times. But people need to correct me be, when I'm wrong. We will be correcting them. I'm talking about just correct me. Y'all talk. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> hey, I got Jones Monroe in the building. She's a real <laughs> super tight guest. No, I'm going to get some game tuned in with super tight. Yeah. I get the low love from Big Bobo from the front seat, not no photos. 